What is up, booktube? It's Monty, and today I'm back again. Once again, with the start of another video, we are doing a weekly reading vlog because I want to. I know that I said that I was done with the little weekly reading vlog situation. That's kind of been the case. Um, if you're a patron, you've gotten some vlogs, and that's probably how it's going to be. Um, <laughs> there just hasn't been anything that I've read recently that I feel like I wanted to come here and sit down and talk about in depth for a variety of reasons. <laughs> And then I still have a bunch of books for the little Aaron gets to choose books for me to read video. I feel like I've been making very steady progress, but it hasn't happened. And so I want this, vi I want, it was originally going to be a vlog. And so what you're, this is, I guess, uh, going to kind of take over for that. Um, but I've already read like half of the things. And so this is me trying to finish the other half of those things. Um, but on Wednesday... I'm gonna come here and we're gonna, it's, it's gonna be a long video. In my head, it's gonna be a tier ranking. I don't know how tier ranking it's actually going to be until I sit down and actually film it because I know it's gonna be a long video. I know it's gonna be a long video because I haven't gotten to talk about Kai K. I haven't gotten to talk to you guys about Wall of Storms and I haven't talked to you guys real, I mean, I've talked in live streams about You've Made a Fool of Death. I've talked about Kai K. I've talked about, like, but those are live streams. Those are all unlisted. You have to, like, go to a playlist. You have to, like, watch reading sprints and, like, deal through other things. And so, I mean, I mentioned them briefly in my July wrap-up, you know, that I read those things. And I, I gave them one star, but we haven't had a real firm, real discussion. And so we need to talk about those things. Those are all books that I think we, we definitely, I feel like this microphone is too far away, so we're going to bring it closer. Um, <laughs> Uh, those are things we're going to talk about. We're, we are definitely going to discuss those those things. But like I said, there are still half of these books that I haven't read that I need to read. So I'm going to read them. Hopefully today is Sunday the 21st. Monday the 29th is when I want this video up. So from Sunday to Sunday, I'm going to be reading and we're going to get through these things. The only book that I actually don't have access to at the moment is Frankenstein, uh, Cleopatra and Frankenstein by Coco Malores. My library does not have a copy of this book. Um, I've been on hold for this book since Aaron sent me the fucking video over a month ago. So who knows when I'm going to get this book? Who, who the fuck knows? But that that might be the only book that I don't read by the 29th or yeah by the well yeah technically by the 28th um, and I probably won't even read it by the 31st because I don't have access to it so we're just gonna keep praying I guess first up I guess we'll talk about the two books that I own because they're probably going to be a priority because I kind of want to unhaul some things and one of these is definitely up on the chopping block. So we have Malice by John Gwynn. I don't know why Erin wants me to read this. I don't know why Erin wants me to read a book that's her favorite. Like, I know that she enjoys me complaining about things. But, like, I don't think I need to read a book that's her favorite when I know I'm not going to like it. Like, could this be a decent book? Sure. But I don't think Malice is going to be a new favorite for me. I started the audiobook for this a couple of weeks ago. And I read the first four pages of it. The audio book is probably not the way I'm going to go, which means I'm going to have to read this, this entire thing today. Not today, but like read this physically and that's not really appealing to me, but that's, that's a thing that's going to happen, I guess. Then I have Pachinko by Min Jin Lee. Uh, this is probably one of the few books that Aaron has given me that might actually be good just because it was on my tbr before i've wanted to read it a couple of times this year i've put it on some patreon polls to see if they wanted it in a vlog and um it's lost it's lost so i haven't read it but i do think i'm going to enjoy this but i've also read a lot of like family stories this year and specifically i've read a lot of family stories that are like kind of intergenerational set in asia and while I'm sure they're all different and unique and they all aren't going to like run the same, you know, I have read a lot. You know, I did Beasts of a Little Land, 50 Words for Rain in Peach Blossom Summer. Is that or was it Ple uh, Peach Blossom Spring? It's one of those. I read like all of those pretty much one month after the other. And so it's been a couple of months since I've read one of those. And, you know, I feel like Bashinko was kind of held up as like the OG in that space. Um but again, like I said, I read three of them back to back to back and they were all very different, but they all had very similar plot elements. There's usually somebody getting sold to a courtesan school. Somebody is like <laughs> down bad. And it's just like, 
Mm-hmm. But again, like, Pachinko did come out first, I think, of those three anyway. Um, but some of those were some of the best books ever this year. Like, Beast of a Little Land was really good, and 50 Words for Rain was really good. Peach Blossom Spring kind of suffered. Again, I don't know if it suffered because I already read those first two, and I didn't know if, like, Peach Blossom is, like, really the moment. But we're gonna, we're gonna try. We're gonna try and get through Pachinko. And then I have two library books. One of these was one I wanted to get, uh, Malice. And this one, this next one, The Portrait of a Mirror, were the two books that I actually wanted to read this weekend. I've brought back Friday Reads over on the Patreon. It's more of like a podcasty experience. Um, so I brought that back last week. <laughs> so the 19th, I brought it back and I'm excited to keep doing them. But in that Friday Reads, I said I wanted to read Portrait of a Mirror and Malice. And obviously, I've read two books, you know, this weekend. I read Zodiac Academy book one, The Awakening, and I read The Book of Godel. But this is the story of like two married couples and how their lives interact and intertwine and what like the fallout. It's more of like contemporary. It's more like rich people mess. It has like potential. It has potential. But I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna go hold my breath on this one. Uh, this is probably going to be the one that I read today. It's probably going to be my Sunday read. Um, I don't want to spend all of my Sunday reading, but I do want to spend some of it reading. So this is probably going to be what I read today. And then I have The Great Circle by Maggie Shipstead. Here's the thing with The Great Circle. So The Great Circle was when I tried to pick up after the first couple. Because I did like Wall of Storms, uh, You Made a Fool of Death, and Kai K all around the same time. And I said, mm, that's a lot of like... Mm, it's a lot so to do, so I tried to pick up Great Circle and I didn't like it I feel like Great Circle there are a lot of ideas and a lot of those ideas made it into the book that didn't need to be there but I said it's okay I'm gonna take a break and so I decided that I was going to focus on the beginning of the month on my Taylor Jenkins reread uh vlog because that's what the patrons they said they would be interested in watching it and I was really motivated to make that content so I binged all of Taylor's books or at least you know the one in her little I think Goodreads classifies it as like the California Dream series so I binged all of those I read Carrie Soda it was a great time I figured that like reading more his, like pseudo historicals would put me in the mood for Great Circle and since then I've read everything but this so I binged those Taylor books then I went back and I started doing I focused again on my Patreon video so I read The Force of Such Beauty for them and I read Crossroads for them and then I just finished like I said so Academy and Book of Godel for me. Well, Ludic Academy wasn't really for me, but I figured I would seize the opportunity of it being available for my library. So I guess we can kind of count it. Um, but Book of Godel was definitely for me. So I've done like a lot of reading this month, um, but have not come back to The Great Circle by Maggie Shipstead. So I still think my focus is going to be on knocking out Portrait of a Mirror and Malice because I feel like those are going to be the two books or Malice specifically is going to be the book that I have the hardest time actually getting through just because I don't expect myself to have a great time there. Um, and it's the first book in a series and it, it feels like the kind of a story that you have to like read the series to really be invested in because it's like this battle for good and evil and there doesn't seem to be a bunch of like other subplots that people talk about. Like it's really just there's this prophecy. These people think that they're both the good guy, but one of them is really going to be the bad guy. So, like, obviously that's going to play out over the course of the four books. And that's just not entirely thrilling to me. It's not It's not really what I like. I really like complex interpersonal connections in books, specifically in fantasy. I don't know. I don't think Malice is going to be for me. I think that my Malice is still going to reign supreme because it's just, it did what needed to be done. I'm going to go because I actually need to read so I can update y'all. But yeah, welcome back to the weekly reading vlog. I'm excited to be here. Hopefully you're excited to be here. I'll see you at the end. Well, like I said, I'll see you when I have something to think about. So these might become an occasional an occasional content again. Who knows? I, I certainly don't. What is up, you guys? So I lied. I was supposed to be reading this. I was supposed to be reading Portrait of a Thief. I have not read any of Portrait of a Thief, but I did finish Zodiac Academy, which we talked about, um, because that was before this vlog started, but I did go ahead and get access to Cleopatra and Frankenstein by Coco Mellers. I've listened to the first 12% of this, which is wild, because I did do what I said I was going to do. I did go to Julie, 
uh, from Pages and Pens. I went to their, you know, Sunday night productivity because they're regular. They happen at the same time every week. I did the first sprint with them and I listened to the first hour and 40 minutes because I was listening at two and a half times speed. And it's okay so far. I'm in the middle of chapter three and so far Cleo and Frank have met each other and their names are not Cleopatra and Frankenstein. That's just like what they call each other, which I guess is kind of cute. And their meet cute moment was interesting, but like from their meet cute to them like getting married to like where they are now, I feel like there has been some time jumping. So we know that Cleo is here like on a, she was on a student visa, but now her and Frank are married and there seems to be like a third person in this relationship I forget their name but it's, I think it's like a woman because it was supposed like because they were talking about Frank because like Frank was a man and like they were talking down on Cleo for being with a man so I think it was supposed to be a woman this is what I'm saying like some of the stuff is a little bit murky um so I might go back to the beginning of chapter three but Cleo and Frank are married Cleo is like asserting that it was not a visa marriage but from what I remember they spent like that one night getting to know each other and like it was cute I will say that like Coco Miller's she really did what needed to be done I feel like on Twitter I have talked about like I think that you know friends to lovers is cute and enemies to lovers is cute but like strangers to lovers is top notch because you can do strangers to lovers and it can be whatever trope you want but like Cleo and Frank just ran into each other one night on an elevator and talked to a bodega and here they are married so I think that like it's giving that for me I think that it's fine so far. So far, it's not giving one star, so we might finally have a hit on our hands. Um, but yeah, Cleo and Frank is going to be the book that I focus on reading today. I have to go back to work, so love that for me. But um, I'm no longer in the depths of slavery, and I'll actually be able to listen <laughs> to audiobooks at work. Um, so I should be able to get through this, I think, between, you know, getting ready. Right now, I'm, I'm in the middle of making breakfast. I'm about to go make a coffee run and then between you know all of that and then this afternoon at work and then on the drive home from work and making dinner tonight I should be able to make a pretty decent sized crack in this and then I think my next priority is going to be Portrait of a Mirror because I do know that the audio for this is available from Hoopla. The first time I tried listening to this there was like some weird uh, violin music. Erin has also downloaded the audiobook for this and she tells me that the violin music eventually goes away. So like maybe I'll get the audio for this from my Hoopla just because I think that'll be helpful. This is still my weekly TBR and I have yet to like really uh, make a dent in it but you know it is what it is. Oh and then I guess Cleo and Frank. I have like 12% left of that so that's all I got going for this first update. I will update you guys again when I have something to say. Good morning to the people. So, I finished <laughs> Cleo and Frank yesterday. The book is bad. It's not good. It's like, <laughs> calling the book bad could be perceived as like, not nice. But here's my thing. Like, the book offered nothing. There was zero substance to the content of that book. And so if there's no context, like, no context. If there's no substance there, what am I, like, what am I reading it for? There's no characters that I like. There's no growth that they go on. There's no actual plot to the story. There are no quotables. So there's nothing in the text. There's nothing there. I think there's a lot to project onto. And I do think that the last part of the book like the last bit attempts to do this like retrospective tying the shit together doesn't work for me doesn't work for me it's the same thing that when people are like oh you made a fool of death with your beauty is like these two people who are grieving and they're like coming together one that old man has been like his wife left him years ago he is not really grieving he's not in like the actual act of grieving because in the context of that story we know but the actual love of his life with this random man that he met and he couldn't be with. And so Faye is like this stand-in for him. And I feel like there's a lot of projecting of feelings of the first two people that he really loved onto Faye. There's not a whole lot of like actual Faye that he is drawn to other than the fact that she has also lost a spouse. And so like she can kind of understand his like, emo like emotions that he has experienced. 
and he feels like he can guide her through that but it's not like these two people are actually bonding like there there are no scenes of them two actually getting together and like actually communicating and actually forming a, a meaningful relationship when though there's like a couple of months ago i feel like there were a couple of romance booktubers that made videos about like some of their book couples that they've read over the past however many years they've been reading romance and they picked some of like the people out and they talked about like did they think that they would last Faye Yi and that man are not lasting they're not lasting like they got a divorce they got a divorce if he didn't die because he was like 20 years older than her he was like double her age actually double her age um he definitely he definitely divorced her ass she divorced him like there ain't there's no way that those two went into their sunset years together you can't convince me so very much like that like attempted in like the last third of this book to like retcon what you had read which i don't think you can the book is less than 300 pages you can't retcon less than 300 pages and here even though cleopatra and frankenstein was 400 that's even like there's you can't go back and be like actually this is what the story was about because there were so many moments that weren't really about the couple like some of the the people who were highlighted who were tangential i feel like you could you could try and copy and paste together an argument that those were really highlighting the flaws of cleo and frank um and how they didn't fit together and all of these these things or you know why that they ultimately would happen but there were some characters who just had nothing to, like quentin Quentin had nothing to do with anybody, and he was literally just there to be the tragic gay, queer individual in their life. Um, that did nothing. That offered nothing. And why are we here? Like, why are we here? It just... And then the book was like, again, it was so... Ver like, there were a couple of moments where some of the ki side characters that were highlighted were of, like, a marginalized identity. Like, there was a moment where we were following Zoe, who is a biracial black woman. Um, there was... I think her name was, like... I don't even know what her name was. I want to say it was Chloe, but I don't think it was. But Cleo had this, like, biracial Asian friend who was, again, it was questionable. There was some Latinx side characters. All of them felt like racialized tokens. It did not feel like they were fully fleshed out humans. It was weird. It didn't make any sense. Cleo as a character also never really came into, like, being. There's a lot of the book that talks about her from an aspect of like what frank saw her as but i don't think there's and like there are moments in the book that are from cleo's perspective but i don't think any of those moments in the book like push back against frank like they resent frank for how frank viewed them but they don't really offer like i don't want to say a rebuttal but they don't offer one like they don't offer a rebuttal and they don't really offer um the lens that cleo sees themselves it's just it's not a good book like it's just not i think that if you just want to turn off your brain go ahead and pick it up but this book has a hideous cover when i said that in Aaron sprints everybody and their mother wanted to like come out of the woodwork and talk about how the cover they like the cover and they fuck with it i love that for y'all i don't know uh and i don't like it i don't really see the appeal at all actually like i think that if you are just a person I think this is actually where the appeal is. And I think it's also the appeal with something like uh, You Made a Fool to Death with Your Beauty or Crossroads or Just by Looking at Him. All four of these books, I'm going to lump this book in with it. All four of these feel like aspirational literary fiction. Literary fiction to me, it does have, I think just be, maybe it's my time on the book tonight, um, but I do feel like literary fiction views itself as elevating just general fiction now we can talk about how this is an elitist mindset and how it could be deemed problematic that's for a, that's for a different bitch okay i'm not that bitch i don't have the the terminology i don't have the moment we're not doing that over here okay like this is dumb bitch energy we're gonna keep the dumb bitch energy so i think that what the the issue with this is that it, it aspires to to elevate something but there's nothing here to elevate the characters can't do it the writing can't do it. The, there's no plot to do it. And so it just like aspires to be literary. And so every, you know, once in 200 pages, you'll get like a really nice sentence. But the nice sentences don't come frequently enough to distract you from the fact that the book isn't elevating anything. And that it is, quite frankly, just regular commercial fiction. 
but it's not commercial fiction that I think anybody wants to read. I think that commercial fiction is compulsively read. There's nothing about, I didn't read this physically because, you know, I didn't have a copy at my library to even attempt to do that. But I think that commercial fiction, there's a sense of like, you don't want to put it down. And the heavy topics that it brings up, they don't, they do it in almost like a background way. Here, the, the pro, like, there's a sexual assault scene that I argue is actual sexual assault, but I don't know how Quentin identifies. That's never really clarified. So w when we're using like these slurs and shit around him, I'm like, what are we doing? Like, are these actual slurs? Is he attempting to like reclaim them? Like, are they, I, I don't know what was happening over there. So we could have cut that entire section of the book. But when you have like Quentin sexual assault, when you have, um, what is her name? Cleo's attempted suicide. There are other characters who bring up how they were sexually assaulted in a very, uh, maybe that's how people talk about their sexual assault to like their friend. I don't know. Um, that I was, I would allow just because that was a scene that was off page. We weren't having to witness them being sexually assaulted and how you choose to talk about that amongst your friends. That's on y'all. But that was like this weird thing where Eleanor had also been in like this unhealthy, it's just weird. It turns her and Frank into like this cyclical nature of Eleanor being with people that she should not be with and not addressing it. Like we don't address the fact that she was raped really by an older man before and now she's getting with Frank and how that's weird because Frank has her boss and older than her. So even though they're both adults and I think it's only like an eight year age gap, if it, it feels icky. No, it, anyway, but none of these are things that are, you know, actually addressed or used to further the story. And I don't think that literary fiction always hits the nail on the head. I think that Young Mungo is still one of the worst books I read this year. Shuggy Bane is another one of these things where it's just like a Jenga tower of trauma, a little life, another Jenga tower of tra trauma where it presents the reader with these things and asks the reader to examine them and asks the reader to bring their own thought processes to the story that is being conveyed, which I don't think is particularly interesting to me I think that it's very lazy for you to do that like I think if you're going to tr attempt to elevate something you have to do it from a viewpoint and so when you're asking the reader like here's this trauma like a uh, Hanya Yanagahara or Douglas Stewart who are both like here's these traumatized children I mean I know that they're both adults eventually it doesn't matter but here are these traumatized individuals here's their sob story I want you to take apart this Jenga tower and let me know what you think that feels a little lazy to me. It feels a little lazy. Not gonna lie. Like, you wanted to elevate, elevate it. Don't ask me to do it for you. And here, and with those other books, You Made a Fool of Death, Crossroads, just by looking at him, they aspire to do that, but they don't actually get anywhere near that, first of all. So calling this literary fiction feels like we're not doing the Lord's work uh, <laughs> at all. Like, not even something resembling the Lord's work. But it also doesn't feel commercial because it's not compulsively readable. It doesn't really hit the topics in the same way that I feel commercial fiction does. And it runs on for just a tad bit too long. You know, like, there's no hard and fast rule about how long commercial fiction can be. But this just feels, feels a little bit too long to be genuinely commercial. So that's where I ended up with this one. Wasn't a fan. Um, hate that for me. Love it for y'all because y'all seem to really enjoy it. But I need to head into work what is up you guys it is it's monty um just a quick update i have started listening to the portrait of a mirror i'm about halfway through i know i'm on chapter 16 or something let me see here no what is it is it this one yes i'm on page 165 and this is by far the best book that I have read for this project. Um, this is what Lit Fake should be. We have character, we have plot, we have writing. A Natasha Joukowsky is doing what needed to be done. I don't think they have a follow-up book out just yet. So if you haven't picked this up yet, definitely do. Because it is really good. But <laughs> that's. I mean, it should be what this update is about. But it's not because... My August Aluma Crate has arrived, and while I know what the book is, and I'm not going to like, I'm actually not going to lie, I did watch somebody on Bookstagram unbox it, so we have our lovely little spoiler card moment, some like packaging, there's like some stuff in here that like, 
I I truly don't know who this this was for. Like I know that this is a an enamel pin inspired by Bunny by Mona Awad, and I don't know why you would do like if you're going to include an enamel pin, I feel like it should be for the book and not for some other random book. Um, I've never read Bunny by Mona Awad. I have no interest in reading Bunny by Mona Awad, and like I get that it's a dark academia. But I don't understand, like, I'm not even going to open the pin to look at the pin because I, quite frankly, don't care about the pin. Just, like, I don't really care about this item. I will say that, um, so I got off the whitelist in July. And so I did get the July box. And the July box had, like, a bunch of stuff that I would use. Like, there was a, a straw set. And even though I already have, like, some bindi metal straws, there was, like, a boba size straw that, like, I don't think I'm ever going to need a milkshake straw. But that was useful. And it came with like this water bottle that I have been using. Um, it's sitting on my bookshelf right now, but I love me a good water bottle. But like a pencil case, I mean, maybe this is useful. Maybe, I guess. Um, we have a stamp set inspired by A Lesson in Vengeance. Uh, includes one rubber stamps and a stamp block. The ink is not included. Again, I'm, I don't need to stamp things. I'm not a stamper. Uh, what is this? These are the bookmarks, which feel a lot sturdier than the, where is it? So I got the Jade City ones. and like, these are just like regular, it's like really flimsy. Uh, these feel much thicker, at least some of them do. Yeah, these feel thicker. So we have Victoire. The Raggedy Bitch Letitia. Uh, what was this? Robin. Robin, you love Robin. And Rami. Love to see it. I do think that, like, it might just be because of how they're printed. But Rami and Victoire, like, their skin is giving... It's giving ashy. And Victoire is low-key. Low-key giving a little red. Low-key giving a little red. But, you know, it is what it is. They're bookmarks. They're going to sit on my bookshelf. It is, like I said, it is what it is. Then we have a reading journal, it looks like. I do appreciate that this is undated. So you you can use it for whenever. It's like really nice. It does not appear. It's not, it doesn't lay flat. And so that to me, like, I guess it doesn't matter because I'm not really going to use this. I have a spreadsheet for this kind of a thing. Um, but there are a number of spaces. I do think that to necessitate, like, like this reading log moment, it these things are, like, very small. And so I feel like if you aren't a neat handwriter, if you don't do a lot of handwriting in your daily life, like me, spoiler alert, this feels, like, a little cramped. But it is stunning. I just wish it was... I don't know. I don't know what I want, but... I'm never going to use this. Like, it's going to probably sell on my bookshelf for forever. But again, none of that was why we purchased the box. Honestly, if I, again, if I could have just been included in the book only box, I probably would have just because I don't really care about the knickknack things. Again, I, the, of these items, none of them are egregious. Um, maybe this little stamp set because I'm not, I don't bullet journal. I don't need stamps and this enamel pin for a book that isn't in the box at all it's just a dark academia like this this is probably the least useful item in the box everything else your mileage will vary but we are here to look at this book right here my favorite book of the year Babel by rf kwong this feels very light not gonna lie i do have some scissors i'm going to attempt to be careful um, just because, <laughs> oh, and we, I definitely was not careful. I definitely scratched the top of my box, but it's fine. It's fine. The box itself, now that I have taken, because I am going to annotate this edition, so it was never going to stay in the plastic. Yeah, that was, <laughs> that was my worry. So, I <laughs> don't, okay, so we have, like, I, I do appreciate, I do appreciate the tower being on the cover. I don't like this because it, 
this is a horrible material. And then, like, well, this is cute. Um, it's just a piece of card. Like, it's literally just a piece of cardboard. So, this is kind of... <laughs> Like, when I said it was coming in this slipcase, I don't know what I was really expecting. Um, obviously, the, the the standout moment is is the the sprayed edges. Um, which I do appreciate that they're... There is kind of, like, a watercolory moment, and it does... Or, like, a marbling. And that is, again, on the end pages. Um, which, are, which are stunning. I just... I don't know. Like... <laughs> I I appreciate it. Uh, oh, this is going to be a horrible book. Maybe I won't annotate this edition because this is not giving very fun to read from, but it's fine. I think my issue is I like, I have a set of naked hardcovers from them and I just prefer, if you were going to give me like a naked hardcover, I prefer it to be cloth bound. Like that just makes more sense. This, this just feels very cheap. Like, this does not feel expensive. And, and these also have stencil judges. Obviously, like, these are, like, sprayed all the way around. And this, like, actual typography that you can read is very clearly um, a harder process, I would assume, than just, like, the weapons that are on the side of these. But this book just feels very cheap. Like... I don't know how to describe this to you, but, like, the book doesn't feel like it weighs anything. So, I'm not a fan. Do I feel like this box... This box costs, like, $54, plus shipping and all of that. And, like, is the value there? I'm sure it is. Like, I don't... I don't disqualify that. But just, like... For a piece of cardboard. And... <laughs> I just... If this... I don't know. I, I like I like the fact that the tower is on the cover, but I feel like we could have done the tower um in in this. You know what I mean? Like it's it, there's like nothing at all on the cover. Like So, I don't know. I don't know where this is actually going to fit on my bookshelves. I'm going to have to rearrange what is up, you guys? So, I finished The Portrait of a Mirror yesterday, which I have over here, because I'm at the library. I'm gonna be returning some things. Um, where are you? Portrait of a Mirror. I gave this book four out of five stars. I don't know if I've updated or not, so in case I have, like, I guess you'll never see this, but this book was really good. Really good. I listened to the audio from Hoopla, so if you're a Hoopla user check see if it's there i will say that the book does start with like violin music playing over some of the beginning that was annoying and it does the same thing at the end of the book but here we're following our four characters west diana vivian and dale as their marriages weave together these characters come in and out of each other's lives and it was a really good time but this book was just giving elitism you know it was giving pretension in every sentence it was giving like <laughs> a little bit try hard like there was just something I really like. Oh, this is what I was saying. The tweet where everyone like got sent into a tizzy was like, you know, the authors that can really write, the girlies that really know what they were doing with a pen. This is that book. This is that book. Every word, like some of these sentences were such tortured in their construction, but I was eating it up. I was eating it up. There were quotables, there were characters, there was a plot because again, they're weaving in and out of each other's lives. So I don't think that any of the books... Pashinko might. Pashinko could do it. But I'm not going to hold my breath. And if this is the pinnacle of the of my reading experience with Aaron, this is fine. This is fine. This is a banger of a book. I think it's being slept on. Maybe the Lip Fit Girlies were reading it, but you can't trust the Lip Fit Girlie to tell you a good book. You just can't. I'm sorry. Um, but this one, this one is. I then started and well I didn't really start I started this like in July but I put it down so I'd read 100 pages but I finished Great Circle by Maggie Shipstead this is low-key Twilight fan fiction when I say Twilight fan fiction I mean like Bella Edward Jacob but also Kristen Stewart Robert Pattinson and Stephanie Meyer has an analog in this book it was absolutely wild absolutely wild I'm gonna go have to 
I know that Chelsea from Chelsea Dolling Reads, she's not really on BookTube anymore, but I still follow her on Instagram. And I know that she recently, well, not recently, I think it was like two months ago now. It was in the summertime. They read this and they had a wonderful time. And I do think that if you are a Twilight girly, like that's why I gave the book one star because otherwise it was pretty boring. I didn't really care about Marion as a character or Hadley, the person in the present who was going to pay Marion. Also, the book was doing a lot of this person is like this famous event, but it's not. Like, the book starts off, and they're on a ship that goes down like the Titanic, but it's not the Titanic. And then Marion is like Amelia Earhart, but she's not actually Amelia Earhart because Amelia Earhart is a character. So is Charles Lindbergh, like, both of these people and other various, like, levels of, like, fame and notoriety, like, aviators and pilots and things. Like, the book does a lot of, like, playing with, like, just random dumping bits of information that really just feel like an excuse to pad the narrative because if the book was just about Marion and the person in the present there wouldn't be a whole lot of content and so that part wasn't as enjoyable to me and I just didn't care so what I did care about was how like I think it does take some level of skill to take a YA paranormal romance series and create a literary fiction adjacent historical fiction that is being praised. I think Aaron was telling me that Great Circle was on like the short list or the long list or was like mentioned in contention for the Women's Prize in Fiction. Um, it was a Read with Jenna pick on Good, Mor Good Morning America. So it, it has some notoriety, some buzz. And I think that that's, I do think it takes some talent to take what is Twilight, this paranormal thing, and just strip it out of all of that and create this, you know, historical fiction book. But ultimately the pieces didn't come together and outside of the Twilight framework, I don't really think it's there. I am, like I said, I am going to go watch some reviews because I just need to, like when in the, I was reading this in uh, Aaron Sprints and the chat was agreeing with me that Hadley was Kristen Stewart. Like the girlies were, we were in full agreement there. I do think that it's not really, I think that Marion being Bella is much more veiled than Hadley being Kristen Stewart. Like I think Hadley is presented to you as a Kristen Stewart type figure. But it just, it, again, it was almost uncomfortable at times. The book also does touch on some uh, topics. It was giving Gone with the Wind a little bit with how uh, Marion's husband was talking to her. It was giving very much like spousal rape. It was giving uh, abortion in like 1930s America. So like there are some heavier topics in the past. There's death of a loved one. Uh, topics such as like alcohol abuse and consumption of like that. So it attempts to do some like hard hitting moments. That's what I have now. I'm going to go enjoy my time in the library before we do the closeout sprints. So I am 180 pages into Malice by John Gwynn. I don't hate Malice by John Gwynn. It's not going to be a new favorite for me. It's it's fine. Like, if you like this kind of fantasy, I think you'll like it. Um, it just doesn't do any of the things that I read fantasy. I read every book for complex interpersonal stories. And fantasy, I think that the what often is like the hindrance for me is that a fantasy will give you 300 characters but only 10 of them will talk to each other at a time and the 10 people that talk to each other at a time are very rarely on different pages they are all usually in unison and you know understanding of what they're trying to accomplish and move together to do and so there isn't a whole lot of complex narratives like the complex interactions usually come between different the, the competing perspectives so like fights between good and evil don't do anything for me because it's just it's it's so high that it's not it's not personal enough for me yesterday i started and completed malice by john gwen the first book in the faithful and the fallen i have really nothing to say i have nothing to say nothing nice and really nothing bad because i think that this is a specific kind of fantasy for a specific kind of reader and i and I know this reader exists. I know that this is a, like, beloved book. I know Aaron ran through the series. Other people have ran through the series. I think Zoe from uh, Zoe's All Booked recently also, like, was running through them. And it's just, like, they're fine. Like, it's... It does feel like old school fantasy in that the plot is much more big picture. It's much more good versus evil. But the characters, they're they're just not present. They're not present. And if this was a book that was published in 1990, 1980, maybe I could get, like, I would let you do it. 
This book came out in 2013. So what are we doing? Like, what are we doing? Not even a whole decade ago. So it's just like, why, why would I give you a pass? Why would I give you a pass? Especially when I'm reading this book in 2022, and I just feel that there are not only more interesting things happening in fantasy and just like better character work happening. That's really just it. Like there's just much, like there's just better stuff happening now. And it's not that there were bad things happening in 2013. I think I could find a book from 2013 that I was like really vibing with and like had a good time. It's just the characters meant nothing. And I feel like you're not supposed to know like who was going to be on what side, but I feel like it, the book lays it out very, very clearly who was going to do what. And John Gwynn does not give you the kind of a vibe that he is going to subvert your expectations because nothing in the book was really all that shocking. Nothing nothing really happened that was all that shocking. I do think that it does take like a Robert Jordan approach if you just like cut out all of the description. And I used to be like, I don't know if I need all the description, Bobby. Bobby, I don't know if I need all the description. But reading The Faithful and the Fallen wanted me to put a little bit of respect on Bobby's name because while, <laughs> while Bobby was doing too much, John Gwynn did, like, nothing. Like, he just, like, kind of threw you in to this world that he didn't care about. Corbin was a little bitch boy getting pushed around on the fucking playground. And he didn't really do anything else. He got a little wolf. And then he got pushed around again on the little playground. And then he ends the book, like, st he finally stands up to his little bully man and I think they actually have to like fight side by side for a hot second so like there are elements of the story that like come full circle and it's like this you know recontextualizing and but it's boring there's the only reason I can like I can accept that this book got published is because John Gwynn is a white man because there was there was nothing like the good and evil wasn't even like that fleshed out like there the idea of what the plot is supposed to be is not even present in the book you're reading 600 some odd pages for an idea to kind of maybe manifest. It's very meandering and getting to the point. There's no real explanation as to why Orbit would be like, yeah, throw this out into the world. Because the plot isn't there. The character isn't there. The writing is mostly dialogue. Like, that's the shocking thing. Like, there is so much dialogue in this book. The paragraphs were, like, super short. And in an adult fantasy, I'm okay with it being approachable. I, like, again, I think there is a middle ground between... Robert Jordan, the J.R.R. Tolkien's of the world, and John Gwynn. Like, there needs to be something in the middle because John Gwynn took it in the complete wrong direction where he cut, like, literally everything. He was, you know, describing these people and... Well, not these people. He was describing this, like, campaign of, like, war they were going to go on. And I was like, this doesn't mean anything to me. And so then I went to the map at the front of the book and I said, oh, yeah, this isn't helping it either. So it's just like, what are we doing, John? What are we doing, John? Why are we why are we playing in my face like this? So for 600 and some odd pages, it was a giant bowl of mayonnaise. There was no flavor. There was no seasoning. There was no razzle-dazzle. The book doesn't even end on, like, a, oh, I need to continue. It just doesn't. Like, and I also think that the, the two people like Corbin and then what is his name Veritas and the little Nathir all three of these people I think were too important to bring together in this little lackluster moment right here because I definitely think that Nathir or Veritas could have murdered Corbin and the book could have been over but that doesn't happen so we can continue on to write for three more books so overall I don't really recommend I don't really recommend Malice what is up you guys it's monty and i'm here to close out this video because it is currently 6 12 so are there six more hours in a day i guess that's it's like what five hours and 50 minutes i haven't read anything of pashinko which is probably <laughs> for the best um i spent my morning editing i filmed something else edited that and I want to edit this video now so I can have this video also go up tomorrow. Um, so if I'm going to edit this, I got to wrap it up. So I read a lot this week. We finished Cleo and Frank by Coco Malloy's. Wasn't a good time. We read Portrait of a Thief. Not Portrait of a... I always... Oh, wow. I'm going to do that for the rest of the year. Watch. Uh, I read The Portrait of a Mirror. That was a banger. I read Malice. That was not a banger. I read Great Circle. While well, excellent Twilight fanfic. Also also not really a banger so it's been a mixed bag a little bit but you know you win some you lose some it is what it is but thank you for joining me on this little excursion 
uh, make sure you tune in for the rest of the week because there will there will be a video waiting for you. There will be one. Um, I have choices announcements. I have read along announcements. I have read a thon announcements. So lots of things are going to happen. And I will be finishing Pashinko and I will be ranking all of the books that Aaron made me read. So that is coming. You are going to get thoughts and opinions on this. It's just, it's just not going to happen today. So thank you all for joining me. Hopefully you had an excellent reading week. Uh, you can let me know what your best book of the week was down in the comment, but I'll see you guys in another video. But until then, and until next time, bye.